In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to style a button in SwiftUI, so make sure your, your cup of coffee's ready and Xcode as well, because we're about to hop on in. So I'll be using a new project, but this can apply to any project, existing, new, old, what have you, as long as you're using SwiftUI. I'll be running Xcode 13 and targeting iOS 15. So if things are a little bit different and you're not quite used to it, or you're like, hey, my buttons don't quite match up, don't worry. It's just, I'm using a newer version. I like to stay as up to date with Apple as possible, but how you make a button style is the exact same way as you do it in all of the Swift UI versions. So the preferred way to style a button in Swift UI is to use a button style. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be making our own custom button style. That way we can apply it to different buttons throughout the app if we wanted to. Button style is just a view modifier that you can call and use on your button views. The button style protocol that the button style has to conform to is available in all current Apple OS's. So Mac OS, iOS, iPad OS, TV OS, and watch OS. All right, so let's hop into it. So first let's add a button into this view. Instead of this text, hello world, we're gonna make a button there. So that's just gonna be like normal. All right, so we have this button here. Might look a little bit different than what everyone's used to. So I'll just format it a little bit different. Uh, it takes in the label tap here and whenever it taps, it has that action that says I tap, I was tapped. If we hit the play button inside the preview, when you hit tap here, you'll see that it actually looks like it's being tapped. All right, now that we have this button here, the next thing we need to do is actually style it. To do that, we need a button style struct. Uh, this struct needs to conform to button style protocol. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just add this struct right here underneath the content view. It could actually live in whatever file you wanted it to live in. Um, but for me, that I'm just gonna do this right here. You could make a new file, which I generally do and have a group of views there. Generally, I will stick all my view modifiers like this, so my, my styles and such, into a their own folder in, and into their own files. That way it's just easy for me to see what styles I have available. So like I said, struct, I'm just gonna call this neat button style. And then we'll just close the struct. So then, like I said, this needs to conform to the button style protocol. So let's go ahead and add that. As you can see here, this there is this button style protocol to auto complete. So go ahead and put that in and it should throw an error. So we can see here that the type neat button style does not actually conform to the button style protocol. That is because it is missing the function make body. So let's go ahead and add that in. So as you can see here, it actually already wants to auto complete this function. And that is because we are inheriting that protocol. So let's go ahead and hit enter and get that to come in. You might be, so you might be wondering what exactly is this configuration? That configuration property holds all of the button information. So the, all the properties of the but button. So if we go here and type in configuration dot, you can see that there's an is pressed, a label and a role. So the is pressed determines whether or not the user is actually pressing the button. The label is where you do all the styling, what it looks like, stuff like that. Um, so in our button example, this would be the tap here label. And then the role, this is new in 2021, introduced at WWDC 2021, um, all the operating systems that came out at that point in time. And this is a semantic role and it's just going to define the button's purpose a bit more. Um, we're not gonna really cover that in this, in this video, but it's there. If you're interested in seeing a video about the role property, then go ahead and drop me a comment below. And while you're down there, it'd be super cool to hit the like button and subscribe. That way you can get notified when you get more videos like this. All right, so like I said, all the style, all the properties live on that configuration property. 
So the first thing to actually style this, we need to style on the label itself. Once you have the configuration.label in there, you can start styling exactly like it was before. So if we just wanna add in the red, let's just say we wanna add, wanna make the tap here red. So we can say dot foreground color, it takes in a color, dot red. Now, nothing's actually changed about this over here in our preview, and that is because we actually haven't applied the style. So let's go and apply that style to this button here. So all you do is you hit the dot button, type in button, style, and you'll see that there's a button style here. So now we can just specify the button style we want, which is the neat button style. Now our button is red. So now anytime we adjust the neat button style, it'll adjust all the buttons that are referencing that style. If I hit the go button here, so we are tapping, but as you can see that there's nothing you can, nothing really happening when we're tapping. And that's because when we overrid this button style, it completely overrid the button style, including uh, the default behavior of dimming it out a little bit. So like if I were to, let's just erase that right now. See how it like takes the opacity down and such like that when you tap and hold. That's because it was when we apply that button style, it just completely overrides all of that. To trigger that opacity effect again, we can give it an opacity and then use that configuration dot is pressed to actually determine if it's pressed or not. And if it's pressed, then we want that opacity to drop, let's say 50%. So first we need to get the configuration is pressed, throw in a ternary operator. If you haven't used ternary operators before, it's very similar to like a single line if statement. So you have the first part here before the question mark, which is going to be what we check is true or false. Well, what the compiler checks is true or false. Um, and this is basically the if statement here, the question mark. And the first thing you pass it is what do you do if it's true? So like I said, we're going to drop to 50% opacity or if it's false, what do we do? Well, we go to full, we keep the opacity at full. So now if I tap here, we can see that it takes it to 50%. And when I release, it comes back to a full opacity. And that's how you can start to configure different, different button styles based on whether the button is pressed or not. Um, and that's really how easy it is to add that button style. Now, if we were to make another button inside the here, we could apply that button style just over and over and over again. So let's just go to how to do that. For Swift UI, I need to wrap it into VStack first. So it's gonna speed up while I do this. All right, and then we have two buttons. We have one that has the button style, which is the top one, and one that has the that does not have a button style. Let's go ahead and add some padding into the neat button style, that way they're not too close. Again, because that's taking in that button style, it only applied to this neat button style. And let's just emphasize that a little bit more by changing the background color. Awful on the eyes, but you get the point. Um, so anything that's inside that button style is going to apply to that one button. Now you might be like, okay, that's cool. I want the same button style, but for one button, I want to be able to pass in the background color based on wherever I want. Well, you can do that. So you can actually make this bot, make this, uh, make body actually take in a variable because it's a struct. So, and then that func inside that function, you can use that variable exactly like you would in anything else. So since it's just a struct, you can actually do a bunch of these like optional things with it. So let's just say we have a background color here. You know, it's gonna be color. Now inside here, we can just say background is background color. All right, so now it's reading it in. It's very upset. And the reason why it's upset is because it has not actually, there's no default here. So actually we need to put in a color inside this neat button style. Um, 
Xcode gave us the option to fix, so I just did the fix option, and let's just say it's blue. So now this color is, the background color of neat button style is actually based off of whatever you pass in on that style itself. So now we could reuse this button style, and instead of color.blue here, we can say color.black. And now we have a blue and a black, and when you click on them, they're gonna act the same because they are having the neat button style applied. And that's all I have to say about using button styles in Swift UI, making them custom yourself, all that fun stuff. If you liked this video and you stuck around for this part, make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, all that good stuff. If you have questions or want to go further into how to use button styles, stuff like that, then make sure to either drop a comment below or join the Discord where we talk about a lot of fun things, including iOS app development. And the YouTube algorithm has probably determined that you actually like whichever video is popped up on the screen right here. You know, the algorithm probably knows us better than we know ourselves sometimes. So why don't you go ahead and click on it, watch the next one if you have it, and I will catch you in the next video. See ya.